society, master the fundamentals, and advance your public speaking and virtual presentation skills. This is the first of our eight learning sessions on confidence building and public speaking. Again, this is Chris is your speech and presentation coach. I honor you for joining us in this program and I congratulate you. So please do congratulate yourself because you are now one step closer to becoming a more com compelling, confident, and competent speaker and presenter. Please type in the comment section from where you are watching. And if you have questions, feel free to type them in. We might not be able to answer them today, but they will be answered in the upcoming sessions. And also on day eight, we will allot time for Q&A. Now, before we begin, let me encourage you and join you to have a pen and paper with you. Have a notebook for this confidence in confidence building and public speaking 2.0 learning series. This will allow you to capture and clarify the ideas and insights you will be gaining from this session. And this will help you implement them. All right? So if you're ready, say I'm ready in the comment section. And again, I welcome you to session one, how to overcome your anxiety in public speaking. Here's the thing, I've met people who've been saying, I want to speak, but I'm nervous. I want to share something, but I'm already shaking now. I want to tell my story, but I might throw up. Have you heard people say those lines? Or have you yourself said those lines? Well, I've been there. You know, minutes before I go on stage to speak, my, my face would turn red. My palms and my armpits would sweat profusely. My hands and my legs would tremble, would be shaking. And if I were to make the call, I would cancel. I would chicken out. I would run away. What were the crazy things you did just because you got too anxious before you speak on stage. You see, fast forward to today, I no longer run away from speeches and presentations. In fact, it became my profession. Thanks to the gift of transformation. Thanks to the gift of having mentors. Thanks to experience to effective approaches because I was able to overcome my fear, my anxiety of public speaking. I learned to embrace it. And it's not just my profession. I consider it my path of purpose. Communication is the cause of my calling. Public speaking is now integrated in my mission to share inspiration and instruction in the fields of leadership and communication. What's your job right now? What business do you do at present? Have you realized that public speaking and presentation is part and parcel of what you do? And if you get anxious when it comes to public speaking, here's the good news. You can go from anxious to excited. Let me say that again. You can go from anxious to excited. Yes, you really can. This has been my story. And if I can go from anxious to excited, you can too. This session will help you go from anxious to excited. So if you're ready, please type in the comment section, I am ready, and say, I am excited, okay? And encourage others, share this video. You haven't shared this yet. Do invite people to join us in, okay? So if you're ready, before we dive 
into how we will be able to overcome our anxiety in public speaking, let us take a step back and answer why. Why do we need to overcome our fear of public speaking? Why, my friends? It is because if you continue to fear public speaking, you will continue to deprive yourself and other people of what I call the five essentials. Let's name those five essentials one by one. Number one, you need to overcome your fear of public speaking so you don't deprive yourself of the path you need to take. Keyword, path. You don't want to deprive yourself of the path you need to take. Have you heard of people shifting courses just because they fear being involved in public speaking? <laughs> Did you have friends or classmates before who cut classes just because they, they did not want to do reporting or oral recitations. How often have you stopped yourself from showing up to an event just because you were too anxious they might ask you to speak on stage? You cannot afford to keep changing your path anymore just because you haven't overcome your fear of public speaking. Number two, you need to overcome your fear of public speaking so you don't deprive yourself of the profit you can potentially earn. Again, the keyword is profit that you can potentially earn. You don't want to deprive yourself of that. One of the great le lessons I realized for more than three decades of living is that every day you and I are selling. Every day we sell our ideas, our thoughts, our suggestions. Every day you are presenting a proposal to your friend, to your classmate, to your colleague, to your boss, to your customers, to your clients. And yes, to your spouse. <laughs> Selling is not confined to the salespeople who made it their profession. You and I are salespeople regardless of our profession. Now for us to sell, we need to speak up. You need to communicate. You need to convey messages. And from the selling comes profit. And if we do not sell, we do not profit. Now, let me clarify that profit does not just come in the form of earnings in pesos. Of course, that's one form. But profit comes in many forms. So this brings us to the third essential. You need to overcome your fear of public speaking so you don't deprive yourself of the promotion that is due to you. Keyword, promotion. Promotion that is due to you. Don't, you don't want to be deprived of that anymore. Now, have you heard about employees not, not being promoted just because they lack public speaking and presentation skills. When I was writing my book, Speak, here, how to craft and deliver a speech or presentation with competence and confidence, I came across studies revealing that many employees, though technically, technically skilled, are not being promoted because they lack leadership skills, interpersonal skills, and communication skills. 
That includes public speaking and presentation skills. There are those who even decline promotion just because they get anxious when presenting during meetings. They forget to realize that they are depriving themselves of many other possibilities. Just like the next one, which is number four. You need to overcome your fear of public speaking so you don't deprive yourself of possible partnerships you can form. You can form partnerships through connecting and communicating with people. If you keep on preventing yourself from giving short speeches or brief presentations because of fear, you are depriving yourself of these potential partners. These potential partners may come in the form of business partners, of potential employers, of mentors, of coaches, of friends, or even life partner. <laughs> so how about that? Would you still want to shun away from public speaking? Number five, the fifth essential. You need to overcome your fear of public speaking so you don't deprive yourself of living your purpose. Keyword, purpose. You don't want to, to prevent yourself, to deprive yourself of living your purpose just because you fear public speaking. Now imagine if I did not embrace public speaking. I wouldn't have trained several hundreds of out-of-school youth and helped them become job ready. I wouldn't have helped young people break free from painful past and unforgiveness they have been holding on all along. Of course, all these are God's work. And I don't take ownership of them. But if I did not participate by saying yes to public speaking, he wouldn't have used me in this path of purpose that I've been called to do. Now, you may have a similar call as mine to become a better trainer and speaker. Or maybe not. Maybe you've been called to become the best accountant, the best engineer, the best teacher, the best police officer, the best fireman, best seafarer, or whatever profession you are now in. If you take a closer look, one essential part of what you do, especially as you go higher, one essential part is public speaking. And if you don't respond to that call of becoming a better speaker or presenter, you are depriving yourself of the best, of the, of the possible best version of you. And you are depriving the community of what you could offer. It took years for me to realize that. It took years for me to embrace public speaking. But with this conversation that we are having right now, I aim to shorten the learning curve for you. If you're excited, say yes, I am excited in the comments section. If you want to shorten your learning curve, say I want to shorten my learning curve. Okay? If you're ready right now, say I embrace. I'm ready to embrace public speaking. So if you're ready, how then do we approach this problem? Paano? How? Now, before we dive into what I'm about to share, please note that there are cases requiring medication and therapy. This is not my field of expertise. That's not. I hope you don't belong to those cases. But in case you do, please seek help 
from an expert or professional in that field. My prescription is non-medical, which may apply to many of you, to most of you. It worked to most people I've met, coached, and trained. Unfortunately, there are people who employ ineffective approaches thinking they are addressing the problem. So before we go into the effective approaches, I would like to share three ineffective approaches that won't solve the problem, but people still do it. Not knowing that it is worsening. These three are worsening the problem. One, hiding. Hiding. People, some people, run away only to face the challenge once again. And now the challenge has, has grown bigger. <laughs> now, if they are on stage, they think that hiding behind the lectern will help them. But this actually makes it worse and gets the audience upset. Here's my word to you. Please stop hiding. Two, ignoring. Ignoring. Some people pretend that the problem isn't there. They ignore it. Now, if, if you do not acknowledge the presence of a problem, how can you solve something that you thought isn't there in the first place? Some people think that they can just continue with what they do, with, whether that's their job or business, by ignoring the demands of public speaking or simple presentations only to miss out on business or job opportunities they deserve. So please stop ignoring. Three, hurrying. <laughs> Some people think that by speaking so fast to finish the presentation will help solve the problem, but no. You would have wasted your own time and the audience's time. And you can, if you continue to deprive yourself and your audience of, of, of this by just hurrying, you continue to, to miss out on, on the five essentials we mentioned earlier. Of the path you need to take. Of the profits you can potentially earn. Of promotion that is due to you of partnerships that you can potentially form and purpose that you must pursue. Please stop hurrying, okay? Please stop hurrying. If there those are the three ineffective approaches. Let me offer a better alternative. And that is to take the five effective approaches to go from anxious to excited. Okay? Are you ready to, to take the five effective approaches? Okay? Five effective approaches. And in these five effective approaches, in them are the steps, some steps within, okay? So, first approach. And by the way, these five approaches, they build, up, they build from, from the first approach to the next and on and on, right? So, first approach, familiarize, okay? You can type it, you can say it with me, Familiarize. Okay. Familiarize. Please, please, please don't wing it. Okay? Please don't wing it. There are no wings in winging it. Okay? 
your wings of confidence and prep your 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 wings of confidence come from preparation and practice let me say it again your wings of confidence come from preparation and practice so here are the steps you need first step prepare your material if you're familiar with your material you can tell yourself i know the material there is no reason i should be afraid to deliver it if you're not familiar with the material then you will be anxious so first step prepare your material second step practice your delivery rehearsing how to deliver your speech or presentation will help you familiarize yourself with how it is done you become comfortable delivering it and when you go up to present on stage you can tell yourself i've done this before and if you've been rehearsing several times you can even say i've done this before several times and then say to yourself and i can do it again i can make it even better right you can say that and that will help boost your confidence if you really did it okay third step practice with your tools or technology if you're using any visual aids or, or tools of presentation like computer presentation slides clicker or projector you have to familiarize yourself with them no matter how fancy the technology is if you're not familiar with them they may even get you more anxious rather than ease the tension rather than help you just like public speaking skills in general these related skills can be learned you can develop those skills another option is to have someone assist you knowing that you have someone to help you in case of technical glitches gives you a level of comfort and confidence or better yet be ready to present in case you have to do away with the tools or technology now a b c d okay so fourth step is get on stage before the final delivery it will be better if you will get on that stage where you will be speaking at before the event before before the day before the the moment when you go to really present okay so that you can get the feel of that stage rehearse how you will stand and move on that stage just feel it now if it's not possible then your preparation of material and practice of delivery that you've been doing on another stage or on your practice stage will help compensate that lack the lack of opportunity to be on that stage before the day okay and then the fifth step is this this is still on familiarizing okay get into speaking in general if you acquaint yourself with public speaking it will be easier for you to respond to public speaking challenges or rather i'll say public speaking opportunities in the future this is the reason why i joined toastmasters in june 2010 and i stayed as a member of this amazing organization up to this day 2010 of 2020 it's it's turning 10 it's my, it will be my 10th year we're counting 2010 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 right it's going to be my my 11th year 11th year 
Wow. Now, this is also why I welcome opportunities to speak, especially when I was starting as a professional speaker in 2014. I, I welcome uh, paid or pro bono, small or sizable audience, five or 50. And now I have spoken to thousands of audiences. But it started there. Why? Because I've, I've been getting into speaking in general. And the sixth step on familiarizing is get to know your audience. Ask details, ask information about your audience. Knowing who you will be speaking to or who you will be conversing with will help you prepare your material and your approach knowing knowing that you know how to address your audience's needs and wants will give you that feeling of confidence you can say to yourself i know what concerns them i know how to address those concerns and now let me get on stage to help them isn't that beautiful? Isn't that wonderful? So my friends, those are the six steps on the first approach, and that is to familiarize. Again, the keyword is familiarize. Now that you have familiarized yourself through preparation and practice, it's time to add, again, to add, not to choose from, okay? It's time to add the second approach and the second approach is physicalize wow i love the fancy word physicalize and to physicalize means to use your physicality or your body to help you in your speaking okay physicalize now the first step in physicalizing is this practice proper posture whether you're sitting or standing standing in public speaking sitting oftentimes when you're doing virtual presentations okay? your posture affects how you speak so straight body position you have to have that not slouched not bended okay so this will help you with the proper flow of air that is being pushed by your mus muscles from your lungs to the vocal cords somewhere here in your neck part where they vibrate as it goes out of the mouth producing sound waves. Now if you're slouching or bending or not in your proper posture, it will be difficult to speak, okay? <clears throat> so what you can do is to, to observe how professional speakers stand or sit and, and model from them because speaking is similar to singing and see what's next. Step two is this, <clears throat> breathe properly, breathe properly because proper breathing helps you produce sound. Breathing also helps you calm your nerves. So practice deep breathing and uh, more on this later. What you can do is inhale through your nose. And as you do, it should be your belly that expands, okay? Your belly here, not your shoulders being raised. If your shoulders are the one being raised, that's shallow. That's a signal that you're doing shallow breathing. So inhale your nose and your belly expands okay as you exhale notice how your belly slowly collapses okay not shoulders dropping okay that should be maintained but your belly collapsing and when you while while you're speaking okay observe this make sure that you inhale through your nose not through your mouth okay 
I, I've seen some speakers, they, they, they run out of air or they, their mouth becomes dry because they inhale through their mouth. It's like, no, 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 that's, that's not good. So you inhale from your nose, through your nose. And as you speak, you, you breathe out, you exhale as you speak, okay? Okay, inhale and then speak right there, okay? And as I speak here, I am exhaling actually. Now aside from this, of course, your practice of proper pausing, which we'll discuss in, um, I think, day six or day seven. Uh, let me check that out, but we'll discuss this in the future very soon. This will help you from running out of air, okay? So the third step on physicalizing, on the physicalize, that's the second approach. The third step for the physicalize is to move your body properly and with purpose. Move your body properly and with purpose. Do not just move just for the sake of moving, you know? Like, it's not related. <laughs> I just want to move, you know? <laughs> no. You should move with purpose. As you stand and move on stage, of course, you have to maintain proper posture and breathing, as mentioned earlier. Now, I am suggesting that you move your body. This is not just to enhance your speech delivery, which also we'll be talking about in, in the future sessions. But I'm suggesting that you move your body also to channel the energy that causes your hands and legs to shake or tremble. You are channeling, you're channeling the energy that causes that shaking or trembling. Here's the key. Don't suppress it. Rechannel it. Okay? Don't fight it. Write it. Okay? Don't fight it. Write it. Don't suppress it. Rechannel it. You are going to transform your energy of nervousness into energy of excitement. Do it as you channel those energy in your body movements. Also, what you can do is before you take the stage, you, you go to the backstage or to your holding room or maybe a restroom if there's no holding room or backstage where people won't be able to see you. To, you go there and shake your hands. Okay, shake your hands like this, like that. Or you can run around, you can run around. Or you can even do jumping jacks, okay? Do jumping jacks. This will help you rechannel those nerves. Why? You will go out into, into those movements. Now, another that you can do is you can also do power moves like stretching your two hands like this or raising your two hands up in v formation okay and combine this with jumping up and down like this okay up and down now this will help induce the release of endorphins that will help you that will make you feel happier and more confident, okay? You can do more research about that, but yes, that's the third step. And fourth step on physicalize, this part, and that is to drink slightly warm water or at room temperature. Don't drink cold water or overly hot drinks just before your presentation because cold drinks constrict your vocal cords while overly hot drinks may damage them. So also you avoid drinking coffee, tea, soda, and even alcohol as they cause mouth dryness. Some people would drink alcohol to, to lessen their nerve nervousness, but it, it's not a good strategy. It's not a good strategy. So, of course, generally you have to maintain proper hydration, even if you're not speaking on stage. And all these steps or, and tips 
just like the other um, the other tips we've mentioned earlier, will help you in general, not just in public speaking. Now, the fifth step under physicalize is to get sufficient sleep. Get sufficient sleep. Are you sleeping enough? Are you resting enough? Studies and experience have shown that sleep deprivation negatively affects speech, judgment, and body movements. Okay, so speech, judgment, and body movements. They, they, they're being impacted, they're being affected in a negative way. So you also need to get rested, especially before an important presentation. To give your best, you need a good night's sleep. That's wonderful, right? To give your best, you need a good night's sleep. Now, we need to always get sufficient sleep, even if you're not going to give a speech the following day. After all, we must stay healthy, right? So now that you've familiarized and physicalized, it's time to check your focus. Because the third approach is focus. What are you focusing on before and during your presentation? Instead of focusing on what you can get from them, you can get from the audience, like applause, approval, or good impression, instead of focusing on those, you focus on what you can give them. Instead of focusing on what you can get, focus on what you can give. Does that make sense? So what can you give? Your help, information, maybe inspiration, empowerment, right? Knowledge, wisdom, framework, solutions to their problems. That's what you need to focus on. Focus on how you can serve your audience. Instead of focusing on yourself, which actually adds up to the pressure, focus on the audience. What do they need? And how you can address that need. How can you address that need? Also on focus is asking the question, what do you care about? What do you care about? Do you care about what they might think of you? Or should you care about your audience and the importance of your message? If you care about your message and how that would help your audience, even if you feel some nerves, you will proceed anyway. Because it is a matter of giving help already. Besides, as you implement all the other strategies or approaches in steps given in this session, I believe that you'll be able to turn your anxiousness into excitement. Okay? So that's on your focus, the third approach. Now, aside from those three, which is to familiarize, physicalize, and focus, there are two more, two more to complete the five effective approaches. And the fourth approach, my friend, is to futurize, okay? Futurize. To futurize is to picture the future in its desired state. How is it exciting? You can do this through visualization. And I suggest you do this in the spirit of prayer. Now, do you remember the discussion we had on, on physicalized, particularly in breathing, the deep breathing before you take the stage? Now, here's how you can make it even more powerful. What you can do is to find time before your speech or presentation to do visualization. You can also do this as part of your morning routine, okay? So sit or stand properly. Again, remember your proper posture. 
So sit or stand straight. If you're seated, I suggest that you put your hands on your lap with palms open and facing upwards, okay? Like this, okay? If you're sitting, if you're standing, if you're standing, put your hands on the side, okay? Make sure your feet is, uh, is uh, flat, feet flat on the floor. And start to breathe deeply. Inhale through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. Again, it's your belly expanding in, collapsing. Now do this slowly. And as you continue to do so, you close your eyes, okay? close your eyes, and continue breathing deeply. Okay, go ahead, you can close your eyes, and just follow the instructions. You can um, have a, an idea of how you will do this. Okay, go on, just inhale and exhale, and with your eyes closed. Now feel the air, Feel how the air is slowly moving in and moving out. Now release the tension that is in your body from your head to your neck to your shoulder to your hands to your body to your legs down to the soles of your feet. As you inhale, take in life-giving energy, positive energy. As you exhale, breathe out negativity, pressure, and anxiety. Now do this several times, maybe 10 times. And as you do this, you can say the word peace. 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 Now, still with your eyes closed, still breathing deeply still with proper posture. Now it's time to imagine. Imagine that you are about to take the stage. You feel excited. You can see the audience. You can see the MC on stage about to call your name. You can hear it. He introduces you. He calls your name and the audience welcomes you with a warm round of applause. <laughs> Smiling and excited, having the intention to be of service to the audience. You look at your audience, you smile at them, and they smile back at you. You speak your message. You say it with confidence. And you close your speech powerfully. You see the audience standing on her feet at the wedding. Thank you. And before you walk up stage, you smile at them. Whisper. And now you inhale and exhale. Still with your eyes closed and in proper posture and breathing, you pray, God, use me today. 
Use me to speak a message that will help my audience. Open their hearts, Lord. Open their minds. Open their ears. May I deliver this message as you want it to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. And slowly open your eyes. Now you're excited. Now you can go and deliver what you have prepared and practiced. Beautiful. Amazing. How do you feel right now? Just by following the instructions. You can feel free to type it in the comment section. How do you feel? Relax, excited, whatever. How do you feel? How do you feel? Type it in. Now, that is even just walking you through this step. Imagine if you do that with more and more information, with more practice. So that's the future. Let's review the, the four approaches that we've seen, uh, that we've shared and discussed so far. Number one, familiarize. Number two, physicalize. Number three is focus. Number four is futurize. And number five, the fifth and final approach to complete the package. Okay, again, put them together. Don't try to separate just one approach. No, you have to put them together. Okay, you have to put them together. And that is, the fifth one is in the word friends. Now, what do I mean by using the word friends? Here's the key. You don't need to do it all by yourself. You don't need to do it alone. You don't have to grow your confidence in public speaking skills by yourself. So here's the first step. Have a support group. Have a support group. It would help if you have friends who aspire to become better like you do. This way you can help each other, you can support each other. And this is also the reason why I encourage you to share this invitation, the invitation to these learning sessions with your friends, with your colleagues, with your clients. This is also why if you are of legal age, I suggest you, you join Toastmasters. Just check it out at toastmasters.org or send me a message. I can help you. Toastmasters is a nonprofit organization helping individuals become better communicators and leaders. That's where I started. That's where I started. But this is just that. Just, that's, that's just uh, first step. The second step is this. I strongly suggest that you have a speech or presentation coach. Have a coach. Support group, having a support group is good and it can bring you to places. But if you want to go higher, to go to a higher level, consider having a coach. I wanted to help more audiences and clients, so I started to receive coaching. Before, I didn't want to. I, I thought I can do it by myself. Wrong, wrong. And it, it, it started when I was in high school. I remember that. Uh, my, my teacher, my advisor was telling me to, to receive help from, uh, because I would be competing in, in, in news writing. And she was telling me, uh, get this feedback, get this coaching. And I thought, no, I, I can in, inside myself. I wasn't, yeah, I, I, I wasn't telling her that I didn't want, but I was telling myself silently that, hey, I can do it on my own. Thinking that when I will get an award or anything, I would say, hey, I did it. I did it my way. <laughs> I did it by myself, but that was wrong. That was wrong. So it, it took me years. And the good thing is I learned the value of coaching. And that's what I do right now. 
You see, um, because I wanted to become a professional speaker, and I started that in 2014, that year I signed up to the Success Speakers Club by Bo Sanchez and Arun Gogna. I couldn't afford the, the, the live sessions, so I had to sign up with the, with the online. And, and uh, I did that in 2014, that's for a year. Also, because I wanted to listen to world-class insights, I enrolled that in 2016, I enrolled to the program called Value Communicating Intensive by Darren Tay, who won the world champion of public, world championship of public speaking, the Toastmasters. Now, because I needed world-class feedback and also frameworks on public speaking and presentation, you know, I enrolled, I joined the Stage Time University of Darren LaCroix. He is a world champion, 2001 world champion. Also Mark Brown, brilliant Mark Brown, and Michael Davis, a TED, a TED coach. And through them, I received this, this top-notch world-class feedback. And it's beautiful. You and I need coaching if you want to go to a higher level. Now, this is the reason why, I, I, because I want to help individuals go from anxious to excited, from shy to shine, from reluctant speaker to a competent and confident speaker, I started to do coaching, doing speech coaching, presentation coaching to individuals who need my help. And this is also the reason why we're doing this, this conversation, these sessions that we're having right now, this confidence building and public speaking 2.0 free learning series. This is one of the reasons why I, I do this. And I hope the insights you gain from this session will help you go from anxious to excited, from anxious to excited. So again, the five approaches, familiarize, physicalize, focus, futurize, and have friends, have friends. But I can't stop here. I can't stop here. I need to push you to implement the insights, the information you've gained. So to help you do that, here's day one challenge. We have a challenge. And since it's a challenge, it might be a bit, uh, it's, a cha it's challenging, but it will help you. Now, what you, get, what you do in this day one challenge is to answer the following questions. Just three simple questions. Number one is, what ineffective approaches have you done in the past? What ineffective approaches have you done in the past? Question two. What effective approach or approaches have you learned today? What effective approaches have you learned today? And the final question is, what will you do to implement this? What will you do to implement this? What is your action step? Now, what you can do is write that down in your notebook right now, in your, on your paper, and then video record yourself. Have a phone, have a, uh, speak to your uh, laptop, to your, uh, uh, to your smartphone. Record yourself answering those questions, these three questions. And, what you can, and then after that, you upload them on Facebook, on your Facebook or YouTube, and then share the link to our Facebook group. We will have a Facebook group where we will also uh, put in the, the recording of this session because after, after this um, broadcast uh, live streaming on this page, it will be removed, okay? And then, but those who want to get the replay, who registered, I'll be uh, driving you to the Facebook group, you join that, and then we continue to have the discussion there. And that's where you will share the link. Again, you can share it publicly and share the link of your video for day one challenge to that group. This is exciting. 
And uh, let me tell you, when, we, when you follow the, the challenges, when you do the challenges we'll be doing in these eight days, it's, it will be powerful. It will give you fantastic results in your uh, confidence and public speaking skills. Okay? So do that. Video record, upload, and share. So remember, my friend, you need to overcome your fear of public speaking. So you want to deprive yourself and of other people the path you need to take, the profits you can gain, the promotions that are due to you, the partnerships you can develop, and the purpose that you must pursue. My friend, stop hiding, stop ignoring, and stop hurting. It is the time to take the effective approaches we presented in this session. Familiarize, physicalize, focus, futurize, and comfort. Remember that you don't have to do this alone. You don't have to do this without anything. With this session and the future sessions in the next seven days, Sorry for that. It's a bit stormy, rainy outside. Again, with these sessions, with these eight sessions starting today and in the next seven days, you will be equipped so that you can overcome your anxiety, master the fundamentals, and advance your public speaking and virtual presentation skills. I urge you, to finish and share this learning series so you can become the compelling and confident speaker, communicator like you are. So, again, this is Crystal Honest, your friend and your coach. I'm honored to serve you. I'm glad that you show up today. You showed up. See you again tomorrow. God bless you. Don't forget to do the challenge and I will be checking on those challenges on those videos that you will be sharing. Now do that so you can yes, start overcoming your fear of public speaking. And not just that, you can level up even more to become the compelling and confident communicator that you are to be.